Speaking about uh, what is there in our country, uh, taking an example in the last, I, I think it's been around two or three years, uh, piloting school had opened up, taken the students' money, and then suddenly closed down without returning the students' money. And now, uh, still, the parents are saying the money has not been received till now. And in our own country too, uh, although, yeah, it is a free country, but still the our, the citizens are facing problem. Now, again, uh, it's been a few years that uh, the British uh, visa-taking applicants, uh, it has gone up, but the ones which are accepted is quite low because many students from Nepal went to England and then ended up having psychological trauma instead because the college there suddenly closed down. So, the, uh, the thing is, when we are going abroad, for studying, how can we be sure that a college is good? How can we choose a right college for us? And then, another question is, why isn't the situation improving in Nepal? Because, taking the example of the piloting school, still nothing is happening in our country. So what do you have to say about it? You have two questions. One is, how do we find out that if you are going abroad, the college is a genuine college or not? So the best thing is, call the embassy. If you're going to the U.S., send a letter or a fax or an email to the U.S. Embassy asking, is this a registered college? Is this a genuine college? If you're going to uh, Malaysia, ask the Malaysian Embassy to tell you. And, if, and the Embassy can always tell you, it's their duty to respond to our inquiry about their country. No matter how much you trust your consultants or advisors, it doesn't hurt to cross-check with any embassy about the genuinity of that college, unless it's Harvard or Oxford or JNU, you know, that, that you are already aware of. But sometimes you hear all these unknown new names. It doesn't hurt to cross-check. Um, if you go to a country that does not have embassy in Nepal, then if you are at risk, it's very difficult for your family here to rescue you. Because then we have to rely on embassy in a third country. Right, so you want to choose the country where that has an embassy in Nepal. So if you're in trouble, we can always call up the embassy and rescue you. That is in, in case of trouble. Come to your first question. Unfortunately, until now, we are a country of scammers, traffickers, smugglers, brainwashers, tax defaulters, right, and bad counselors. They have taken over because young, smart people like you leave the country. If you leave the country to some criminal idiots to fool around, they will fool around. So if we are suffering, we are suffering because of ourselves. If you give option of genuine business houses, people have the common sense to choose between good and bad. But if they are only given bad choices, then they will take the best of the worst ones available. But if there is only one piloting school available, and if that person has supposedly a good family background, people will trust it. Now, if your own family members take you to a certain consultancy and dupes you, right, and you don't have options, when all the television commercials are cheating you and you don't have options, that's what you will follow and that's what is happening. You know, there is a lot of money in scam and easy money and most of the time in a political, politically unstable country like ours, one can get easily away with it, with some money because there's so much money they can always bribe and fix things and even control the media to a certain extent. And otherwise, why would we become uh, a country with highest number of women trafficking. You know, we are a conservative society. We don't want to sell our women. You know, it's morally wrong, it's ethically wrong, and it's legally wrong. But still, that's maximum because everybody can wash anybody's brain here. And when you have some good people, we create bad name of them because their business will suffer. And young people like you believe in their stories and theories. So maybe a bit of critical thinking is also necessary. You want to go and check for yourself whether that's genuine or not. You know, somebody 
just puts anything out and we believe like somebody is a rich Nepali hangs out with Brunei king lives in Solti and we put them on the cover page and we find out that they have they are in heavy loan you know, this is the job of also a lot of responsibility on the side of the media but if somebody is feeding you crap it's your duty not to eat not to take it it's your responsibility also if somebody can sell crap they will sell crap right it's your responsibility to protect yourself and unfortunately you know the, the rule of law has been broken and now you know why political structure stays unstable because if a country is rich guys make a lot of money because the country is unstable how do they want the country to be they want the country to be unstable if they can get away by not paying the tax to the government because you can influence the ministries by paying some money to some politicians you will want to keep it like that but the question is a country with almost 40% population being youth is this how we want the country to be i don't want the country to be like this i want a better country for myself for my family for my society and for my fellow citizens that's why i'm doing this right now the, the thing is if only 10000 youths did this you know talked among themselves discussed among themselves the country would change what is even worse is young people bring out magazine and even in the school magazine you go and interview the same idiots and smugglers who look because they're dressed with tie and suit and they stay in a big bank as a ceo you know, of course they have money you know they have they have done this smuggling channel they can they can establish a bank and they can be a ceo do you think they'll look like the villains in hindi films you know if they're smugglers they're not going to look like uh, the villains in the movies you know you know it's not always that they'll have a bad face if they are a villain they could look good they could they, you know they have money they can buy nice clothes they can establish a company they can look like a ceo and if the young people are like you are going to put them like as visionary thinkers of the country it's not them who is uh, duping the country it's young people like you who is validating their positioning you know it's not, that's not that's not how we want the future uh, of the country to be and and we have to be very discreet it's it doesn't hurt to doubt people you can doubt me also and, and if i'm good i'll come out clean so it doesn't hurt to doubt anybody because if that person is right you will will come out right if that person is wrong you will save yourself from getting getting duped look at the amount of uh, beauty contest we have in the country there is no money in the glamour industry in nepal right So if you use that logic if there is no money and there's still so much of investment doesn't it sound fishy now right doesn't it sound fishy if there's no money why would you invest so much and continue carry it on maybe you could do it once or twice to see if it works or not right maybe it's an easy vending place for trafficking there's money in trafficking right there's a lot of money in trafficking right so if you use your own common sense right which we get for free to use you will you find these things out and you'll you'll stay away from getting fooled let's not wait for that superman to come and fix the things you know let's try to be that person ourselves to take initiatives in different sectors politics is a mess all over the world there is economic crisis there is fuel crisis all over the world it's not just nepal um but the question is how many countries in the world have a larger percentage of young people who are still hopeful and optimistic and want to find solutions for the country and we definitely are one a few years from now considering today we're still in a good position so we have a lot to hope at and lot to be ambitious about Thank you.